In the last 200 years, we've created a global world of staggering complexity. It is a moment of turmoil, a moment of upheaval, a world in transition. The volatility is going to be the new normal. Do we really want to live in a world where 1% own more wealth than the 99%? We need a commitment for the long term. For the first time in history, there is a real and genuine opportunity for public-private partnership to address some of the big issues facing the world today. Today, we have become a platform for public-private cooperation. It means for us a great obligation to serve the world. 68% of people think their economies are just for the wealthy. That's at best a disenchantment, at worst a disengagement with democracy. From this, what can you see about poverty? The discussions here don't just impact the people who are sitting around in Davos talking about the issues. They affect everybody. One of the ways we can at least build that sense of trustworthiness is through making more and more of what we talk about here available to people. Le terrorisme a des terrains sur lesquels il prospère, c'est-à-dire les conflits. This fight is not going to be decided on the battlefield. The outcome is going to be determined in classrooms workplaces, in the perceptions and the thoughts of individuals, and the ways in which those perceptions are created. It's no longer possible to not live with disruption, and the only smart thing to do is to disrupt yourself. We're using technologies like these transformation maps that are actually enabling us to now point our discussions and pivot them from one to the other. 2015 is going to be incredibly important. We have the Sustainable Development Goals and we have the climate change negotiations in December in Paris. If you look at the ambition of India on the renewable space, we are looking to become the world's renewable energy capital in the next five years. The prediction was one gigawatt per year by 2010. This year, we're on track to beat it by 62 times over. This is happening. We can do this. We we can take pictures from space. And so we made a commitment that if it can be measured from space, we want to help make that available to help advance the sustainable development goals. Inequality is not inevitable. Inequality is the result of public choices. If you can get labor force participation of women, you could raise some of the GDPs in Africa by 12% or in India by 10%. With the use of technology, we can reach universal access to secondary school within a generation. 47% of the employees of our company are women. We should not shy from taking challenges. It's also up to us to pave the way for younger generations. We've co-developed Shaping Davos in collaboration with our Global Shapers community. And we're bringing them into the conversation and out to the wider world. I'm very happy that the issue of LGBT rights really has come mainstream at Davos this year. There is a reaction to that, but it's a reaction that's losing. Moving from awareness to action is the gap that I think the World Economic Forum is working hard to close. Gavi was born here in Davos 15 years ago. In 15 years, we've immunized half a billion children, and we've prevented more than seven million future deaths. The combined monthly purchases of public and private sector securities will amount to 60 billion euros. With the European Central Bank's announcement, and with low oil prices, the countries that need to make structural reforms should move now. I think business people need to recognize if we ignore the arts, we ignore our culture, we ignore society, and we ignore our future. We've worked with a number of different artists and cultural leaders to create the kind of experiences that will help people change their mindsets and views, but also open up new ideas and new thinking. It's very emotional. It's very intimate, reminding you we're all the same. I hope that in 2015, people with power can show creativity, courage, and leadership. Be brave, be determined, overcome the odds. It can be done.